Let's pray together. Father, we thank you at this time. We do bless your name. You are awesome. You are wonderful, almighty, compassionate, and merciful. Lord, we pray tonight you touch every life, turn everyone around, and everything we expect, everything we confess, we're going to possess. Manifestation of miracle in every life. Manifestation of power in every life. That Lord, this day will be a turning point in every life and we go through the rest of the year in the power and the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Confirmation in every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we bring this global crusade at the Alpha location here in Baden, and all over the world, in all the six continents of the world, as we are connected together, I want to address everyone. I'm addressing those who might be coming for the first time. And you expect that what had happened in the previous five days, this is your day. You have come. The Lord knows you are there. He will touch your life. I want to address those who have been coming since we started and you have been taking the journey of faith and you want to know now that the foundation of faith has been built in your life how do you build on that the lord knows you are there the lord will reach you at your point of need how to talk to those who are not new their fathers and mothers in the faith they know the Lord. They love the Lord. They preach the word. All the same. And the Lord has granted us opportunity tonight. Everything we say applies to everyone. Our families. Our workers. Our leaders. Citizens of this state. Citizens of our country. And citizens of Africa and the rest of the world. The Lord wants us to understand something about faith tonight. Tonight, I'm speaking to you on growing from Thomas' faith to triumphant faith. Faith has levels. There is the level of Thomas' faith the faith of Thomas. There is also the level of triumphant faith. That whatever challenge, whatever problem you have in your life, you believe an instantaneous miracle will take place in your life. In my life. I said in my life. The Lord is going to surprise you with a miracle today in Jesus' name. The topic, growing from Thomas' faith to triumphant faith. We find the story in John chapter 20. And I'm reading there from verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came, Thomas knew about the crucifixion of Christ. He was nailed to the cross. He knew about the burial, but he didn't know about the resurrection. Christ, in his awesome power, had risen from the dead, but Thomas did not know. And Christ had come and appeared to the people. He was not there. Look at verse 25. It says, The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. 
They told him, you miss something. I don't want to belabor the point that if you have not been here before this day, well, a lot has happened. But then, today, more will happen. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hands into his side, I will not believe. Let me bring out some words there. Except I see, I will not believe. Thomas, do you think Peter, John, James, Matthew, Bartholomew, and all the rest of the apostles, do you think they are telling a lie? They said it already. We have seen the Lord, and you are not there. Why don't you believe? Thomas said, whatever testimony others give, whatever demonstration of power and miracle others have seen, and they testify to that, he said, except I see in his hand the print of the nails, I will not believe. Verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within the house, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus. He was here on the first day. He was here on the second day. On the third, on the fourth, on the fifth, he was there. He saved, he healed, he delivered. Now we are here again. Jesus is right there. By your side there, you are blind. Jesus is right there. You are lame and you want to have the power, the strength to rise up and walk. Jesus is right there. Or you are the doubting Thomas and you are here. And you are saying, I'm hearing stories. They said, blind eyes opened. They said, short leg grew out. They even said in the previous crusade from Lagos that four dead people rose from the dead. I hear, but except I see, you will see more than enough. <laughs> then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and he stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Look at that. Thomas was there. He said, peace be unto you. Peter, James, John, everybody, peace be unto you. Without any discrimination, peace be unto you. Peace be unto your family. And tonight, the peace of God will reign in your heart, in your life, in Jesus' name. Look at verse 27. Now, in verse 27, Thomas did not have to say anything. The thought of his heart, the words of his mouth, Christ knew already. You don't even have to say anything. The thought of your heart, the expectation you have, the request you have, and the prayer you are offering to God, God knows everything already. And he will meet you at the point of your need. Who am I talking about over there? Your day has come. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Verse 28, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Thomas changed, you will change. Thomas turned around, you will turn around. 
And then in verse 29, Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are they as you are there tonight. And the Lord sees you. He said, before you see, you believe. Then he said, blessed will you be. He will bless you with salvation. He will bless you with healing. He will bless you with deliverance. He will impart a miracle into your life in Jesus' name. Now, as I look at the story, I just read the story to you now, very quickly and briefly. I'm going to divide that story to three parts. Number one, the battleground of believing only after seeing. Battleground. Battleground. The battleground of believing only after seeing. Number two, the bedrock of believing before seeing. The bedrock, the solid ground, the foundation, the unshakable confidence of believing before seeing. Number three, the blessedness of believing beyond seeing. You see the problem, but you see the solution ahead. You see the sickness. Beyond that sickness, you see your healing, and you know it's coming. You see the terrible things all around. Beyond those terrible things, the blessedness of believing beyond sin. Let's go one after the other. When we come to number three, and then you get away from Thomas, and now you have triumphant faith. I'm telling you, tonight in your life, all things are possible. Yeah. Let's look at the battleground. Number one, the battleground of believing only after sin. Now, take on Thomas again. And think about the implication of what he said. Except I shall see with my own eyes and touch with my own finger and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe the battleground of believing only after seeing. Thomas and others like him exalt self above the witnesses. Thomas and others like him. Thomas and the people who walk by sight. Thomas and the people that will not accept the validity of the word, the power in the word, and the power of the utterance of Christ. Thomas and people like him the exalt, number one, self above the witnesses. Who are the witnesses? John, Peter, James, and the others. The witnesses, believable witnesses, authentic witnesses, the people that will not tell a lie, but that will say exactly what they have seen. Now Thomas exalted himself above those witnesses. Number two, Thomas exalted sight above his words, above the words of Christ. You must remember that many, many, many times Christ had declared, I will be taken by wicked hands. I will be slain, I'll be put to death, I'll be killed. And then he said, on the third day, I will rise again. That's the word 
and Jesus had said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my words will not pass away. Thomas relegated the word to the background and he said, I must see. He trusted a sight above the words of Christ. You know, when you come and you see the problems in your life and you relegate the word of God behind, he said, I will come and heal you. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. And he said, all power on earth, in heaven, is given unto me. And he is the mighty healer, the great physician. That's the word. Once you accept that word, and you are not placing your sight above the words, miracle will come to you. Number three, situations above his wounds. Thomas was looking at the situation. I saw him. He died on the cross. I saw him when he was hanging there. I heard when he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, I saw those wounds, and I want to feel the wounds. I want to put my finger in the wounds. He exalted the situation above the wounds. He was wounded for a transgression. He was bruised for iniquity. And then the chastisement of our peace was upon him with his stripes, tell me, you are healed. You know, but Thomas was exalting my situation. My situation, what I saw. And then he thought everything was down the drain. But when you remember, he was wounded for you. Whatever the situation whatever may be happening around you and you know by those stripes i am healed tonight i want to announce to you you are healed number four seeking signs above is wonders seeking signs above is wonders the wonder of the resurrection Christ had announced at the grave of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. And that wonder of resurrection was right there now. The resurrection and the life had experienced it himself. He rose from the dead. And the other disciples said, Thomas, we saw something. We saw somebody, that same Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He rose from the dead. Uh -uh. He said, I'll see the sign myself. The sign of the nail-driven hand. Once I see that, then I know you don't have to. Because Christ, the resurrection and the power, Power came up from heaven, rolled away the stone, and he rose up triumphantly. And Mary saw him, and the disciples saw him. Even the angels said, Why are you looking for the dead for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. The problem of Titus of um, Thomas and the problem of other people like him, the seeking signs above his wonders. They are back to the time of the judges far, far away, thousands of years, and Gideon put the fleece there. If uh, the deal comes here, 
then I will know we're going to be victorious. And then the following day, if the other part, if the fleece is dry, and then everywhere is wet, then I will know they're looking for signs. But you don't need any other sign. The sign you need is the sign of Jonah, who was three days in the heart of the, of the earth. And then on the third day, he came alive out of that whale. Jesus is risen. Your savior has risen. Your deliverer has risen. Your healer has risen. We're not looking for signs anymore. He is here. He will touch your life tonight. If I feel this way, if I feel that way, if something pinches me, you don't need all that. His wonders will come in your life. Number five, seasons above his workmanship. There was uh, a battle, a war between Israel and an enemy nation. And there was no water. And then they called on the prophet Elisha that he will pray. And then prophecy came and said, that's in 2 Kings chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. You will not see any wind. You will not see any rain. And yet, the valley shall be filled with water. You know, it's not the rainy season. It wasn't the rainy season at that time. But then they understood that here is what the word of the Lord has said. You must not exalt the seasons above his workmanship. It's the work of God. It can bring rain anytime. It's the work of God. It can heal your body anytime. And tonight is your night. Healing. Somebody shout, healing. We don't have to wait. Is this the season or is this not the season? Number six, self-will that I will not believe. He hardened his own heart. Peter, don't tell me that again. John, don't tell me that again. Testifier, don't look my direction. I will not believe. Self-will above the divine will. Self-will above the divine will. What's the divine will? The divine will is that Christ will lay down his life and take it up again. No man took it from him, but he had the power to lay that, that life down and to take it again. That was the divine will. But Thomas exalted his own self-will above the divine will. The divine will in your life is that your will be saved. And tonight, your will be saved. Satan cannot contradict that. Angels cannot contradict that. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, who is the whosoever? You are the man today. You are the woman today. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life congrats congrats congratulations you have everlasting life tonight that is the divine will heaven says yes to salvation it says yes to your healing it says yes to your deliverance and what heaven has willed will come upon your life Number seven, science above his works. There are people that know a little bit of science. When I said a little bit, not up to one percent. When you think of the earth, you think of the grass, you think of the fields, you think of the forest. You think of the anatomy of man. And you think about all the bones in the body. 
and you think about all the parts of the body, you know next to nothing as an individual. You think about the stars in their trillions and billions. You think about the planets. You think about the sun. And if I told you that you can pack the earth like a globe, you can pack thousands of the earth into the ball that makes up the sun, and you will still not fill up the sun. You don't know anything as yet. And then the little science we know, we exalt that above the works of the Lord. That's what Thomas was trying to do. He was uh, trying to do analytical science, empirical science. You know, our to determine that Christ has risen. He exalted science above his works. But God will break through. I said they will break through. I remember I was having a crusade at Hillary. And there was this uh, young girl that came from the university there and had one hand withered, no life, could not stretch the hand, could not do anything with the hand. And I said to the people, we're going to pray now, raise up one hand, touch the other place, she shook her head and she said, never. I will not allow this man to use psychology on me. And then I prayed. Meanwhile, the mother was blind. And uh, so we finished that day. And they were going back home. As they were leading the mother back home, lo and behold, the blind eyes opened. If you are going to clap, clap. And that daughter said, what do I make of this? Because this is my mother. Where is the science? The work of God will shatter that science that is troubling your mind. <laughs> and then she slept at night. She woke up in the morning. By the time she woke up in the morning, the hand perfectly all right the works of god the works of god that work will be done in your life tonight in jesus name and look at this look at this in first timothy chapter 6 verse 20 o timothy keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science Falsely, so-called power will be manifest in your life today. That's the battleground. I come to point number two. Point number two now, the bedrock of believing before seeing. The bedrock of believing. The solid ground. The foundation. The unshakable foundation of believing before seeing tonight once you believe what the lord is telling you through me before you see anything at all i tell you this is what you are going to believe now whatever you feel in your body whatever may be happening there i tell you your healing has come tonight I believe it will be confirmed in Jesus' name. What you confess, you possess. Once you say, 
That's the word of the Lord. And that word comes to me now. I confess it. I am saved. It will happen. I am healed. It will happen. I am delivered. It will happen. Look at, look at John chapter 20 verse 27. In verse 27, then says he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hand, and reach hither thy hand, and trust it into my side. Look at this, and be not faithless, but believing. That's what the Lord is telling you tonight. Be not Faithless, but believing. That's the bedrock of believing before you see, before seeing. One, be not faithless, but believe. Two, be not fearful, only believe. You see, Christ was going to the house of Jairus. Because Jairus' daughter died already. And they brought the information, negative information. Don't trouble the master anymore. Your daughter is dead. Look at this. Mark chapter, Mark chapter 5, verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, it says unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Be not fearful, only believe. Tonight, be not fearful. I'm talking to somebody there. Only believe. Some years ago, a wife, who wanted to be a mother, but had not had a chance, had a particular sickness. And so, that sickness demanded oppression, and they had to remove the womb. And the husband said, I love you, child or no child, and I want you to remain alive. And so, they removed the womb. And without the womb, how can she conceive and have a child? And so she kept on praying, Lord, give me a child. And the husband said, my wife, I don't want you to have mental problem. This, you know, child, child, child. You know it cannot happen. You know they have removed your bone. I signed the paper myself. And then the woman heard where I was having a meeting. And she came. And while in the audience, I said, doesn't matter. If they are taking away the reproductive system, God has power. Be not fearful, only believe. So I said, then we prayed. I said, go. And you see her, she was in the congregation. Go buy baby things and everything will be all right. And you know, she accepted, she believed. As you believe tonight, it will happen to you. She started buying baby materials, and the husband looked the other direction, will not discuss the matter. And then, without a womb, she got pregnant. How? Go and ask them. And then she went to the hospital to that doctor and said, Doctor, doctor, examine me. I'm pregnant. The doctor said, no, I cannot examine you. It's what we call phantom pregnancy. Because I did the operation and I know he knew. You can never be pregnant. Well, the ninth month came. And that woman went to that same doctor and the doctor took the delivery of that baby. And she delivered. Because the word of God says, if you can only believe, 
all things are possible to him that believeth. On the day when that new mother of a good, healthy baby was coming to give testimony, the doctor said, I will follow you to that place. And the doctor came and confirmed real miracle. The miracle going to happen in your life will be confirmed. Number one, be not faithless, but believing. Number two, be not fearful, only believe. Number three, be not faint-hearted, just believe. Not faint-hearted. You will not be faint-hearted. When you think of what had happened, what had not happened, what you have gone through, what you are going through, it's likely you're faint-hearted, but we're told in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 4, and say to him, take it and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted. Neither be faint-hearted. What will happen? Verse 14, in verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and bear a son, and shall call his name. Tell me, did it happen? Did it happen? Your own will happen. Don't be faint-hearted. What can't God do? He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. Is there anything too hard for me? Number four, be not feeble. Now believe. Be not feeble. Don't be shaking, shaking. In your understanding of the word, Abraham and Sarah were already old. A hundred years for the man. 90 years for the woman. And yet, the Lord said, trust me, I call those things will be not as though they were. And because they were not feeble in their faith, they received their miracle son. And because you are not feeble, because you know that with our God, all things are possible, you receive in Jesus' name. Number five, be not fretful, simply believe. Be not fretful, simply believe. The man told Jesus, he said, if you can do anything, please help us. Sometimes the spirit will take him and he will land in the fire, sometimes in the water, to destroy him. And Jesus said, if thou canst only believe all things are possible to him that believeth. Because I believe tonight. Because I believe tonight. Because I believe tonight. All things are possible in my life. I said, the smile of faith on your face. The smile of expectation on your face. Because you believe all things. In whose life? Possible in your life in Jesus' name. Number six, be not far. Come near and believe. Be not far. You see, there are people, as God is working wonders in every life, and the Lord is saying, He's here for us. It's here for you. It's here for everyone. Come near. They draw far away. Look at Psalm 73, verse 24. It says, Thou, in verse 24, it tells us, Thou wilt definitely and surely guide me with thy counsel afterwards. Thou shalt receive me to glory. The Lord will guide you. He'll say, this is your day. This is your time. He'll come before you and say, 
this is your miracle. And then you stretch forth your hand of faith and you receive in Jesus' name. You're lying down there, helpless, and the Lord comes to you and he says, now, you'll get up. Give me a good amen. amen. And then at the mention of the name of Jesus, he'll get up in Jesus' name. Amen. Seven, be not forgetful. Be not forgetful. Keep believing. Be not forgetful of all these testimonies who have heard. Deaf ears open, be not forgetful. Blind eyes opening, be not forgetful. Did you see that, um, that uh, boy between two and three years of age yesterday, if you were here, all, all the way in Turkey, one leg conspicuously shorter than the other, and we prayed here, and the power of God traveled over there, the mother holding one leg, the father holding another leg, and they were opening their eyes. Before their eyes, the leg started growing, and the, the one that was bent stretched out, and then it became equal with the other. And they gave testimony yesterday. Today is the day of your testimony. Be not forgetful of all this thing God has done. Just believe. I invite you to point number three now. And your miracle is near. The power is near. The authority that comes from heaven to rule. Every problem away, it comes to you right now in Jesus' name. Point number three. The blessedness of believing beyond sin. Believing beyond sin. Look at John chapter 20 verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Verse 29. And Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, Thou hast believed, blessed, this is where you're coming. Blessed, this is the sentence of Christ for you. Blessed, this is where you stand tonight. Are you there? You have not gone home yet? I, do you know the Lord is talking to you now? He said, blessed are they that have not seen yet have believed he put blessing on you already he said you were not there in the first century you were not there in the acts of the apostles you were not there in matthew mark luke and john when he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil you were not there but he said yet you believe yet you believe and because you believe tonight you are blessed you are blessed with salvation you are blessed with healing you are blessed with a miracle this positive practical believing grants everyone number one performance of the supernatural just believe in. Yes, Lord, I believe. And I know tonight is my night. Performance of the supernatural will come to you. Number two, perfect healing from sickness. Perfect healing from... Uh, the centurion was coming and he came to Christ. He said, my servant lies at home he wasn't there tormented of the devil tortured by the devil harassed by the devil he said that my servant is going through a lot of trauma a lot of torture 
a lot of problem. And then Jesus said, let me follow you home. I'll come. And he said, no, no, you don't have to come. How is the boy going to receive the healing? Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. He wasn't looking for when Christ will come there and touch the boy and feel the sensation on the face and see him being judged and jolted, being tormented. He says, speak the word and the word will travel and go there and my servant shall be healed. Performance of the supernatural and perfect healing from every sickness. Tonight, Christ will speak the word through me here. It will land on your head. It will land on your tongues. It will land on that near. The word of Christ will come from here and land on that sickness. And the moment we hear the final amen, finish. Affliction, finished. Sickness, finished. Number three, prevention of a sudden shock. This man came to Christ and he said, please, please come before my son dies. Christ did not follow him home. He said, go back home. Your son liveth. And the man believed like you believe tonight. I said like you believe tonight. We were in Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo. And one of the lady journalists there had a father that was dying in the hospital. And she said, because those journalists came to meet me at the airport, when I see the pastor, at that moment, when our eyes clash, there will be an explosion of miracle in the hospital. That's what she said. That's what she said. And then they took, uh, they drew a big photograph of me and they stretched it like this. And she stood at the corner because she knew I would look at that photograph. As I looked at the photograph, my eyes met with her eyes. At that moment, the father in the hospital rose up and was immediately healed. And she, he knelt down and began to say, Lord, I'm not worthy that you have healed me like this. Forgive me my sin. He got healed. He got saved. It's coming to you. I said it's coming to you. Number four is the preservation from all storm. Paul the Apostle with many others, 276 others, they were in the ship. And there was a mighty storm. They took all their wares, everything they had, and threw into the sea. And then an angel appeared unto Paul and said, Fear not, you will get to Rome. And all these people that are with you, they will also remain alive. Nothing bad will happen to you. And look at what they, now he said in chapter 27 of Acts verse 25. In verse 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. He had not seen it. The storm was still raging. And yet he said, I believe God that it shall be, even as it was told me. Brother, believe. Sister, believe. Everything you are hearing tonight, it shall be done in your life. He will forgive your sin. He will set you free. He will heal your sick body. You will jump for joy and strength in Jesus' name. Number five, productivity for sterile spouses. 
productivity. That's, we'll come back to Abraham again. He tells us in chapter 4, verse 18 of Romans, who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And I, in verse 20, in verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through belief. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And it happened. Productivity, old age, did not hinder the birth of that child. Your physical condition will not hinder the miracle you have tonight. Yeah. Number six, possibilities of sustained speech. Possibilities. Possibilities in your life, possible. Salvation, possible. Healing, possible. Deliverance, possible. Miracle, possible. Shout the word possible. You know, when the choir was singing, they said, we confess and we possess. And I throw it at you. I confess. I possess. Look at this, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore, have I spoken. We also, here. We also, there. We also, tonight. We also believe. And therefore, we speak. And it is done. I said, it is done. Number seven, possession of our salvation. Possession of our salvation. Whosoever comes to him, he will in no wise cast out. As you come tonight, heaven has received you. Jesus has received you. Your name will be written in the book of life. You believe it before you feel it. You believe it before you see it. Congratulations. Everything you have desired, everything you have prayed for, the Lord has confirmed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. What is he there? Amen. Amen. Heaven is saying yes to your request. Yes, yes to your prayer. Yes. Even though you have not seen it, yet there is a confirmation in your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Tonight, you will receive. It will save your soul. It will change your life. It will remove the guilt and the condemnation you have in your heart in Jesus' name. It's bowed, eyes closed. You want forgiveness from the Lord. Freedom. Freedom from guilt. Freedom from condemnation. Freedom from the punishment of your sin. Freedom from the power of sin in your life. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. Tonight is your night, final night. And that forgiveness, that freedom, that salvation, freedom from condemnation is coming now. As you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Anywhere you are, far to the back. 
far to the sides, anywhere, everywhere, salvation has come. I said salvation has come. Put up that hand. Stand up. And say, Lord Jesus. Say it, Lord Jesus. Say it, Lord Jesus. I turn away from my sin. I receive you as my personal Savior. Forgive me now. Turn my life around. Change me completely. Thank you, Lord. I believe and I receive because I believe. Amen. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the merciful name of Jesus, the conquering name of Jesus, I bring all our brothers and sisters, boys, girls, everyone before you now, according to your promise, forgive their sins in Jesus' name. Set them free, free from sin, free from condemnation, and free from the guilt of their sin, free from the yoke of their sin. And Lord, I pray, register in their hearts now the assurance of salvation, the joy of salvation, the freedom that salvation brings. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Praise the Lord. It has happened. Say it has happened. Say it has happened. Blessed are they which have not seen yet believed on the basis of the word. Keep on standing. Uh, state pastor is coming to handle this counseling time. Then after that, the final prayer for the final day of this great crusade. Stay on. Don't go until you receive.